Green on Black folks, and basically we're here where we can show you that uh, the Big Bang Theory is going all to hell because, and then that's what they're recently showing you, uh, you know, finger painting of that, <laughs> that basically it is scientific actual data that they've got there on that too. But the Big Bang Theory is a bunch of hoo-ha crap. Big Bangs, now if I said Big Bangs, but I mean Big Bangs, Big Bangs ain't that far off of some kind of acceptance. But a Big Bang, forget it. Space is too infinitely huge and everything like that. Okay. And then when, when we have pan stars coming by, and then this is, I will just back up the video there because I already gave you the date there. And we're on a frame here where you see basically, uh, I also showed in the last video, basically pan stars came in and started sucking the energy. And I'll show that a little bit in here too. Towards the end, I'll show this how pan stars, when it came in on the 10th, it started sucking the energy, the electrical current that was in the solar system when it came by through our solar system, okay? Uh, you can see it here also, and you, you have a dramaticness of it, seeing it that it you can see. Now, I always tell everybody to try to watch this on a laptop so you can tilt your screen so you can see it a little bit more clear. But coming up through here, I'm at 400% right now, you can see it, a total Y okay or a basically a V diamond action and this here line here this is coming off Saturn don't get wrong Saturn's got magnetical and then the fact that there's been so many moons at Saturn there is they keep counting them we think we're up to like 68 or something like that there, there is absolutely 63 for damn sure at Saturn and they think they're up to 68 moons on Saturn right now now it has a lot of magnetical to it but also the actual fact that the sun's over to the left, and you'll, you know that pretty much, but you'll know a lot more if you don't know. I haven't watched videos a lot. And we have a very distant umbra that we end up, signature that we end up getting, <coughs> that when pan stars come through here, you can see it right here, all the way along this frame shot. You can see the umbra, pretty much a perfect circle of the magnetical strength of the sun. Now it does keep Earth tied in, and you know, wait, remember Saturn's way the hell out and way, way, way back there. Okay, shown in this shot on B, just the angle of the satellite on that date. Remember, I've already showed you where Saturn's coming around again, and you can get it on the footage. I'm trying to remember if I've seen it on A or B or whatever. So there's massive distance, 360 degree circle around the sun. So, but this is great to be able to see the umbra that far out on the sun as pan stars and as you are seeing there's more than one you see pan stars was not just one okay now we're going to play hit play on this but th you'll see this when this flashes at this time spot and then you can play with the video and you can freeze it at that remember that time period and you can freeze and you'll see all this now we're going to show you that basically why these are basically going to be planetoid objects someplace in another solar system somewhere when they eventually get caught i.e. the sun didn't have enough energy it's not wasn't a big enough supergiant remember there's stars that are four to seventy eight times the size of the sun so that means they have more magnetic coal you know and saturn's got magnetical too because it's caught moons over the years okay so the big bangs theory is really getting shot all the shit because uh, factually you got pan stars sitting right here in an x-ray shot and if you don't believe me there's earth right there okay in earth in the moon even though it's 30 333,000 or 383 I can't remember offhand right now how but it's just under 400,000 miles or something like that that the moon is away from earth uh, and if I'm totally wrong on that big deal right now but you don't even really kind of see it as the earth had the same magnetical and to see how far away we are from the sun you see so these are basically going to end up being some planetoid objects somewhere in space when they finally get statically clinged to some star somewhere in the vastness of the infinite size of space yes ladies and gentlemen this here object that is directly up from earth right there we don't know what the hell it is because that's not Saturn and there's nothing back out the back door there right now with Saturn all month long ladies and gentlemen there's nothing Okay, absolutely nothing. I mean, it's, it's wrong to say that there is nothing. There's stuff that they don't tell us that's actually planetoidally there. And remember, that's not the object that I said that's... But this is one of the objects that is rotating around 
the sun clockwise, okay? Actual, factual. Okay, so we go over here, and IE, a duh, the sun's star belt, okay? Because that's not just a CME off the sun, that's the connection, the, the umbilical cord out there of the star belt in space that the sun is in with the supergiants and all the other stars. So actual factual, let's hit play on this bug puppy. And we'll get down in size to like 200. And that's what you were looking at. And uh, I'll try to even get in here because it's just so much in every little frame of this coming through for like what, 10th through the 18th? Don't have to be exact on days right now on showing you this footage. Now, that's actually drawing it back down. So actually, this kind of works because basically, now that's not the way pan stars went. If you watch the clock, we're going backwards. But as this came in, The sun froze it and let you know that there was way more than just pan stars. There was two and even possibly three. So Earth got froze and it's shot there. And there's the other planetoid objects out there. Then you got to start and then see because how we had Mercury come around. That we know that this object right there, that these, this thing, and I, you should watch the last video and I show you this object that comes around, ends up going around the Earth. Okay, and it's not Mercury because Mercury's right there. Mercury's marked. Okay, and that's not Saturn there. Remember, Saturn was up higher on the shot. Okay, and they end up showing you where Saturn's at. So as this came by, the sun did its magic. Now I'm going to hit play so that we have it. We'll hit forward so that we got it going in the right motion. So this came around on the 12th. So it's almost like I need to start doing each day showing what we were able to see. And I guess that's what we're going to do from here on out. Is a show, I'll show you one video each day of it coming through our solar system and the movement of this object here, the movement of these other objects here that are magnetically clung to our solar system because you can see the magnetic lines on them, but they're moving clockwise. And then if they're not, then these are objects that are to our next closest star of any magnitude of magnitude of size, even if it's smaller than the sun, it's got more magneticism uh, to, and basically everything out there in space is positive negative polarity. Okay, it's just clung to whatever star magnet positive negative polarity that they're close to. And like I say, actually factually, one of these days, pan stars is in millions or billions of years or maybe if it takes trillions of years eventually one of these days where it's just going to keep charging because it's sucking the energy out of the sun as it goes by actually both of these if you go back to that footage where i had that you know right here in this video of that pretty much area in time there that they are sucking energy as they come through so they're magnetically clung to space because okay, they're not twirling out of control left and right and stuff like that. They're going in a straight flipping line on a railroad track. A magnetical track through space. So this is just more actual factual. So I guess that's what we're going to end up having to do here is going through on the 12th. And then what we need to do is I'm going to try to get in here on some positionings on objects that you can see that you know that are closer to the SOHO satellite camera. And also closer to at least pan stars and the sun and you can see them when they come up and go through now here's a very important separation point in time too that the, the you have pan stars up here and then factually I'll take and get this like that and you'll realize I think I went backwards see that's just the back portion of pan stars you see there was more to pan stars than what they're letting you know about okay Basically, a falling star, a future planetoid object, because basically um, more than one moon, quite possibly, but it has something trailing behind it there, as you can see. So, step back, you see that, and then you see that factual error separation. And then I go a little bit more, and then you'll end up knowing that, that's right, way more than just... You see, 
three-dimensional triangular you see check that position out now watch higher you see so that was actually a triangulated object that came by you see now I'm gonna go back you see that now watch out watch this position here too okay as we go back you're gonna see the white node see different position See, so there's 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 tons to study here on pan stars coming through. Tons, magnetical, magnetical line there, magnetical line here. So, the actual factual. That's what Beano Black's all about. NASA's not going to show you this stuff too much. We're stealing it. We're not stealing it this year, taxpayer dollars. We're getting it from Sechi. So, now what we need to do is go look at some of the distance of some of this. You see this here? This stuff is closer to Earth, Mercury, and the Sun. Basically a straight line, pretty much. Now, they're not directly in line, but they're close enough ballparking distances on this stuff that's through the tail. So, these objects here, also these objects here, because what the backside of and let me go to showing you factually too that on I think it is the 13th it sucks up a CME check that out it takes all that electrical static CME action off the Sun and sucks it up like a vacuum cleaner check that out that's everything on the uh, whole 24 hours on the 13th that the bigger portion of Pan stars pretty much suck that whole CME that you see coming out. None of it gets over here to Earth. Okay, so they're in. It's they they are sucking energy as they go through space. Basically, i.e. The, the video I done before this one, showing you that the idea of the bling bling of whatever we've got. So we still are a little bit, but it should be hyperbolic stars that are up by Saturn. And if it doesn't get any closer, then we know that that's exactly what that is. But at the same time. We know that pan stars is not just pan stars is not a comet. It's a falling star, future Earth planetoid object that had a lot more with it than just the head there that you see there. And then if you see the blue version, if you can get a hold of it out there, this will be all white here. This area here will be white, and this area down here will be white in the blue one. This sucked the whole CME in there. Now we're going to check out some of the distances on some of these objects that you can see coming up through the tail because they're closer to Earth. And this may be a good couple videos on showing you stuff like that. So the 12th is a good one we're going to sit on here and, and try to get some of the stuff that's basically no argument that the idea that if it comes up in the white tail, if we move forward like this object there, and we get more objects this here object here there's even objects here that no matter what they are within the distance of what they had for pan stars ballpark because you triangulate it from the head of that pan stars to this but they're saying there it's basically the same distance ballpark wise okay all this stuff this here this stuff here Anything that's in the tail portion that you end up being able to see because of the straight out whiteness, triangulation wise, that stuff is within this here object here. Remember they did the blackout up here. I'm not sure if this is the one, there was one day that they did the blackout. So we're going to go ahead and try to find some of these here objects that you can see as we come up through. And once again there, it looks like we have a great the idea that this might be one of the objects that they blacked out the next day or something like that. I think on the 13th they did some block. It was one of the days that they did blocking. But as you can see there, as I'm stepping back, that there is something that is basically right there as it goes up. As it goes up, you know that there's a planetoid object. There's something out there that's pretty damn good size that's sitting right there out 
the Mercury, and we know the sun's over there. So we have an object right there, triangulated.